Do this right now if you want to learn how to invest as a complete beginner. We are entering what experts are calling a new Great Depression where a lot of people are going to lose their jobs and their income because of all the craziness that's going on with the world. And while everyone else is freaking out and panicking, there is a small group of people that are taking advantage of all the chaos and actually creating income for themselves and how complete beginners are actually taking advantage of this new framework to actually get rich. And the best part is you don't need any experience to do this. This is literally what we've been teaching all around the world in multiple different countries, in multiple different cities for people to actually create ultimate freedom for themselves. Now stop, before we begin, I wanna remind you results disclaimer that this is not financial advice. I am not a financial advisor. Do not be an idiot. Do not take anything on YouTube as financial advice ever. Do your own research and consult a professional investment advisor before making any investment decisions. But what I can promise you is I can show you the exact framework that I'm using in my life right now to create ultimate freedom for myself and my loved ones to make sure that me and my family are always safe and not worrying about if the market is up or down. Now, who am I? My name is Mike Vasile. I'm based in Bali, Indonesia. Grew up in the suburbs of Chicago, raised from immigrant parents from the Philippines. And I started investing for location freedom, financial freedom, and most importantly, time freedom. And as you can see, when things started working, I literally grabbed my ukulele and started traveling around the world. Here's me in Machu Picchu. Here's me singing with a whale shark in the Philippines. Here's me chilling with a monkey in Thailand. And again, taking the people that I love all around the world, because the thing that I realized about investing and learning exactly financial literacy is I didn't actually want to be stuck working a nine to five job for the rest of my life. I wanted to travel around the world. I didn't want to be stuck like what my mom and dad did was stuck at a job that they completely did not like that was ruining the relationship because they were always fighting about the money and I knew that I just wanted to go ahead and break free. Now as you can see I started a YouTube channel, wrote a book and I started traveling around the world and speaking on stages teaching all these things that I've been literally learning the hard way. And after going from zero to 1.5 million in 12 months to then losing it all to then becoming a millionaire in a very short time after. I have found the best way to learn how to invest as a beginner. And this is what people don't realize. The first time you make money, if you do not deserve the money to begin with, you will lose it. Like, do you understand that? There's so many people that are making money with like crypto and, and pump and dumps and all these things where they think that, oh wow, all this money that's coming in, but they never knew the actual financial literacy or the investment ideas to actually go ahead and allow them to maintain their wealth. Does that make sense? And we found out exactly how to go ahead and do this while mitigating my personal downside as much as possible. Because at the end of the day, it's not about how much money you make, it's how much you keep and how much you save and how much you invest so that you never have to worry about money or working a day in your life forever. Now shift number one, if you are not willing to own a stock for 10 years, do not even own it or think about owning it for 10 minutes. This is Warren Buffett. Now this is one of my biggest problems, right? Because I remember when I first made a bunch of money and I was like, okay, I'm, I'm gonna invest this. And I, I had this like ego bomb me because I was like, oh, I'm so good at investing, I know exactly what I'm doing. So I was investing in projects that I wasn't planning on holding for the next 10 years. And the problem with most people isn't about buying stocks, it's not knowing when to actually sell it. They buy things that they don't understand because they saw something on Reddit or they saw a YouTube video or they saw some YouTuber talking about it. They're like, oh, let me go ahead and go in on this. And they buy it and maybe they bought it at a good price. But because they don't know how to sell it or they don't know when to sell it or they don't know what they actually bought, they don't know exactly what they're doing. So it doesn't matter, they're gonna lose a bunch of money because they don't actually think about it in a long-term place. And if you look at some of the top investors like Warren Buffett, like Charlie Munger, they buy things to hold for 10 years. And this is a concept that you need to go out and think about it in any investment idea, not just with business or investments, but in relationships. If you're not willing to do something for the next 10 years, if you're not willing to invest in something or someone for the next 10 years, why would you waste 10 minutes doing that? Right, this was literally my biggest problem. I, I, I made like, like say, for example, several six figures and I had it in my bank account. I was like, how am I gonna invest in this? And I had all these crypto projects coming up because I was watching all these YouTube videos and reading Reddit and they're like, oh, just throw it on the, in, this, in this coin, you're gonna get rich. And I started putting the money that I literally worked my butt off to earn in these projects. And guess what? Because I didn't know when to sell and I didn't know like what I was actually holding, I was losing money left and right. It was death of a thousand cuts because everything that I was investing in, everything that I was buying in, I didn't have the inclination to actually hold for 10 years, right? And the thing about investment, it's not that people make a bunch of money in a short amount of time. It's doing the simple things over and over again and expecting actually a great compounding result at the end of it because you just stuck the course. It's like the people that invested in Google and just held. It's like the people that invested in Tesla and held. It's like the people that invested in Amazon and just held. You literally go ahead and if you understand that you wanna go ahead and keep something for the next 10 years of a company or, inv or an investment or a stock that you wanna invest in, just having that mindset 
will literally help you out a lot better. Now the second shift is compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. He who understands it earns it. He who doesn't pays it. This is Albert Einstein. So I remember I had a mentor once told me, right? Literally, this was in the beginning of my entrepreneurship journey. He was like, Mike, would you rather get a million dollars up front or a penny that doubled every single day for 30 days? Now most people are dumb. Most people are stupid. They're like, oh, give me the million because they have no delay of gratification. They want things now. They want that instant gratification. But what people don't understand is that penny that doubles every single day for 30 days turns into $5.36 million. Here's an example. Look at this. On the first day, it's not even a cent. On day seven, look at this. It's not even a dollar yet. So that's 64 cents. On day 14, it's only $81. Two weeks in of doubling, it didn't even break $100 yet. But the magic happens from day 21 to day 30, where it goes from $10,000 to $5.36 million, right? And you can see that it literally happens at the end of it. And that's what investing is. When you understand that it's about playing long-term games with long-term people and long-term games with long-term companies and businesses that you have an idea that they're going to be around in the next 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years, investing becomes a lot easier because you think in a lot longer term time horizons. Does that make sense? Now the sh third shift is be fearful when others are greedy and be greedy when others are fearful. This is Warren Buffett. Now this is very hard if you are young. This was very hard for me because there were only times where I was in this, where I was only, where I only knew what it was like when everyone else around me was greedy. Like if you really think about it, the last crazy great depression or recession that happened was 2008, right? So if you were literally a kid in 2008 and you didn't actually feel that pain, most people my age and most people younger than me and most people older than me, this is kind of like their first time feeling this fear of what's going to happen if the market plummets and crashes. And one thing that you need to look at, and this is what I learned from, for example, in crypto. I remember I got into crypto in like 2000, like 17 and 18, right? And I saw what it was like when everyone else was greedy and everyone else just was putting money, putting money and the greed was way, way, way too high. And there was very little fear. That's when I should have actually been selling instead of investing. I was doing the opposite. I made the same dumb decision like most people get started when they're investing and they, they let greed take advantage of them, right? But you gotta look around. If everyone else is greedy, if everyone else says, oh, buy this, you're gonna get rich. If, if even like, I remember I, I was in a taxi I was literally in an Uber driver in, in Thailand, and this Thailand guy was like very bullish about crypto. That's when I should have realized, oh, Mike, maybe this is a time for you to actually sell. When the world is greedy, that's when you should be fearful and sell. When the world is fearful, that's when you should actually start be buying. And I remember when the crash of 2018 happened and it just died. Everyone else just stopped doing crypto. But the people that stayed in it, when that were greedy, when, when the entire world of crypto was fearful, those were the ones that made so much money. When the second time came around, when Bitcoin went from 20 grand to like 60 grand, I knew people that were literally making a Bitcoin a day when Bitcoin was only $3,000, right? Because they were, they were literally greedy when everyone else was fearful. Now that $3,000 of Bitcoin that they were making every single day turned into like $60,000 at the height. And if they knew how to sell it because everyone else was greedy, then you, just understanding this concept will already put you way further ahead than everybody else. Now this fourth shift is the 4% rule. And this simplifies the entire investing strategy because for me, I, I just wanted to just make sure worst case scenario that I do not have to work a job ever again because I didn't want it. You know, I didn't want a boss to tell me what to do, when to go to the bathroom, when I could go ahead and see my family, when I could go on a vacation, when I could go ahead and use the bathroom or pee or poo. It's idiotic that you let somebody else who's no smarter than you stamp a price on your forehead to tell you how much you're worth, right? So I just understood, okay, well, how can I get out of this, right? And my first goal was if I could save enough to just have $100 per day earned from my investments, then I literally never had to go ahead and work ever again. Worst case scenario, I can move to Thailand and just live there forever, which is literally what I did back in the day, right? I, I, I just lived as cheap as possible. My apartment was like $200 a month. I was like, okay, worst case scenario, if all else hits the fan, if I just understand this 4% principle, I could just live in Thailand for the rest of my life, literally start like gaining back my confidence and courage again to then go out there and try it again, right? And you could see, this is exactly how it works. So $100 a day is about $36,000 a year, right? Now, if you divide it by 0.04, which is 4%, you are left with $912,000. Now, what does this actually mean, okay? So theoretically, this would be my nest egg that if I found a way to make $912,000, right, and invest it properly where I get about 10% return in my investment every single year, then I could theoretically take out $36,000 every single year and still die with more than $1 million to my name. Now, why is that? Because if my investment grows, and let me, I might lose you for some of you guys because it's like math and whatnot, but as my investment grows 10% every year and I only pull out 4%, you could see, theoretically see 
How? You could literally go ahead and earn money because you're not, you're not taking more than 10%. You're only taking 4%. Does that make sense? Right? Now that you understand how powerful these shifts are, let's actually go over the seven step framework that I actually go ahead and use and implement myself in my business, in my life, and everything else. Now the first step is investing in books. Why is that? Because let's put it this way. Your friends are broke. Your mom is broke. Your dad is broke. Every single one around you is not making any money. And here you are thinking you're gonna become rich, you're gonna learn how to invest. If you take advice from people that have no idea how to invest, that's like you learning how to play basketball from someone that has never picked up a basketball in his day in his life, right? That's like you trying to get a six pack and taking advice from someone who's completely fat. It does not make sense, it's idiotic. If you wanna become good at basketball, you listen to Michael Jordan, soccer, David Beckham. If I wanna learn how to invest, I'm not gonna to listen to my mom and dad that have no idea how to invest. I'm not gonna to listen to my college professor that's teaching me out of a textbook. I'm not gonna to listen to my friends that have not made long-term wealth in my, their life at all, so why would I listen to them? People are listening to people that have not the results that you want right now. As you're listening to me, you're probably listening to your friends, oh, invest in this stock. Or, or, or parents, oh, don't do this because you know, like everyone is scared. You're listening to people that are broke. And if that keeps on continuing, it's very hard for you to actually make money, right? So what I did, this is literally what I did in college because I wanted to start investing myself. I wanted to invest, but guess what? My mom and dad had no idea what they were talking about investing. My college professors had no idea what they were talking about investing. And my friends were talking about investing, but none of them had anything to show for it. So I was like, okay, well, where am I gonna go ahead and find people that I could actually learn from? Well, obviously, if I don't have any money and I don't have any money for courses or events or any of these things, the cheapest thing that I could actually invest in is myself and in my mind, which is books, right? It's literally books. Like I stopped listening to all my friends. And I literally just started reading books. And out of all the books that I've ever read, if you just read these three books, you're already way better than most people out there that are completely gonna get destroyed when everything bad happens in the world, right? These are the three books. Number one, Rich Dad Poor Dad, just for the mindset, because understand, investing in wealth isn't a skill set. It's a mindset that you need to adopt and a mental worldview that you need to see about the world. That's exactly what's gonna get you to start thinking right, right? On understanding the difference between good debt and bad debt, assets and liabilities. This is what I started doing to actually fix my mindset. The second step is learning with that mindset to go ahead and start a business, which then now you have money coming in. What do you do with the profits? That's why, you know, Profit First is a good second book to understand, okay, I need to go ahead and take some of this out so I can invest it. The third one is a simple plan to wealth. If you are overwhelmed with investing, you're like, oh, I don't wanna know, I don't know what stocks to pick, I don't know when to buy, I don't know when to sell. Reading this book when I lost everything was so good because when I started making money again the fourth time around, because I've lost, made a lot of money and lost a bunch of money three times in my life, and now this is my fourth time coming up, so now I'm being very, very, very careful with my investing strategy, right? This is what people don't understand. People maybe made a bunch of money one time, they've never lost it. Like you don't actually learn how to properly invest until you lose a bunch of money because of the bad decisions that you make. And that's the only thing that pain and failure can actually teach you. So again, you could either do that yourself or learn from my pain and my mistakes. And these three books are literally all that you need. You don't get out of life what you want, you get out of life who you are. And I knew that if I'm earning a certain amount in my bank account, that's because that's what I deserved. And for me to actually grow, I needed to go ahead and become valuable, right? So what I ended up doing is I started finding mentors, right? I remember I literally flew to Bali and the next door neighbor was someone that was a multimillionaire. So I remember every single day I would go ahead and for example, drive to his place on my moped and just knock on his door and just ask for advice. And I would ask him questions and ask him questions. And he would start telling me exactly all the things that he was learning, the skill sets that he was doing. Many of the times the skill sets are sales and marketing. If you understand sales and marketing, you can literally always be okay no matter if the market is up or down. And the people that don't understand sales and marketing raise skinny children because they don't know how to eat because they just don't know exactly how to make money to actually provide for the food to actually go out and eat. So sales and marketing was the biggest thing that I ended up learning from my mentor. And ultimately the main lesson that I learned from him is you get paid in direct proportion to the value that you create in your marketplace, right? So if you aren't liking the income that you see in your bank account, become more valuable. How do you become more valuable? Learn. I literally did it by watching YouTube videos, reading books, finding mentors, moving next to them, asking them questions, knocking on the door and be like, hey, how did you learn sales? How did you learn marketing? What business models did you get into? What skill sets did you learn? And as I started doing all these things, my skill sets in sales and marketing started increasing naturally. It's the same way how if you're around five lazy people, you'll be the six. If you're around five people that are broke, you're gonna be the six. If you're around five people that have a good skill set in sales and marketing, you're naturally gonna get better. Step number three is invest in your own business. Now the thing about wealthy people is no one understands that most success happened because people owned a business, not because they had a job, because they owned a business. Because a job, you're literally trading your time for money. A business, you're literally working for money, but then money will then work for itself. Does that make sense? And here's an example for this. I figured out 
with the skill sets of sales and marketing that I learned that ultimately I need to sell some type of product or service. That's all business is. Someone has a pain point. Oh, wow, I literally pooped in the bathroom and it smelled so bad. Oh, I have a big pain point. Oh, hey, no way, I have a candle. If your bathroom smells so bad and you have a girl coming over and you're worried that she's gonna smell the fact that you farted in the bathroom, don't worry, I have these candles, they smell really good. Just like that, I sold a product and service to a pain point that existed, right? If you don't have a product or service to actually go in and sell, one place you could actually go ahead and find is ClickBank. ClickBank's really good because they've literally paid $4.2 billion out to people just like you and I, and they're over 200 countries. You could see ClickBank getting paid 12 grand per week from ClickBank into my account, right? And you could see it's pretty simple to go ahead and sign up. Any product or service to literally go ahead and make money to go ahead and invest the difference is just, just find a product or service. And if you don't have any, ClickBank, sign up for free. You can literally click on the magnifying glass. You can see all the products that are, that you can start selling right now for free, right? And you can see how many people have made money with this in the past 30 days. You can see the niche that you could go ahead and sell it in. All you gotta do is click on promote and do a little bit of marketing. And when people go ahead and buy through other people's products and services, we'll do the shipping, the handling, the customer service, you literally get paid commissions, right? So that's literally the main business model that I end up doing that I literally start building up my cash flow, right? Because again, you can't invest $5 a day and then ex expect yourself to be rich in just traditional investments, right? Like the way that society and school teaches you. Oh, go get a job and all your little bit of your savings, you know, you're gonna be able to retire when you're 65. We don't have time for that, right? I wanna live my life now. I wanna live an epic, amazing life with amazing people in my 20s and in my 30s and my 40s. Not when I'm 50 and 60 and I'm old and I'm fat and depressed. I don't want that, right? I want it now. And for that to happen, you can't do the normal way of just getting a job and then doing, oh, like, let me invest in my 401k because that's what Susie and Sally from accounting are doing. No, it's stupid, right? So once you understand that, step number four is spend less than you earn. Here's kind of like a graph. I drew this because I'm an artist, right? So check this out. So most people, let's just use linear numbers here. Most people, as they get older, naturally because their skill sets are growing in the job, in the corporate ladder that they climb, they will start earning more income, right? So as you can see, the graph is kind of like this. But what happens with most people, because they're dumb and stupid and they keep up with the Joneses and they're like, oh, well, Susie has you know that nice apartment, so I need to go ahead and buy that nice apartment. Jack has that car, so I need to go ahead and buy that car. Is they literally, as they make more money, their expenses start cry rising, right? This is called lifestyle inflation, right? As you make more money, you have this lifestyle creep where you literally just start spending more. Now the problem with this is even though you're always making more, you're always spending more as well. So you have very little savings or margin of safety that you could actually go ahead and for example, you know, keep. And worst case scenario, you lose your job. Like if there's a recession or like if there's a depression or if your boss lets you go because a lot of people lose their jobs and a job can't be just the only way that you're making income because it's not reliable anymore, right? Your, your lifestyle expenses go up, but then your income's just gone. And you're just forced to realize, oh man, I have all these expenses. And once your expenses starts rising, it's very hard for it to go down. Does that make sense? So this is exactly what you need to understand because life isn't like that. When you're an entrepreneur and when you start your own business, sometimes you might go up, down, up, down, up, down, up, 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 and down, 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 down. This was literally my entire lifetime, my lifestyle journey, right, of making money online. I would have good months and bad months and then I'm like depressed and sad because I'm like, what if I can't make any more money? And it's just like up and down and up and down and it completely sucked, right? But one thing that I did is because I lived, for example, in Thailand when I was first getting started, my apartment, even though I was making like hundreds and thousands of dollars, right? Literally, it was $200 a month, my apartment in Thailand, right? That wasn't the best, right? You can literally go back in the old videos and just find it was just like some ugly, smelly couch in the background that I literally started making these videos with just a cut off t-shirt. But what happened is as my income was going up, I made sure that it stayed the same. My expenses stayed the same. So what ended up happening is I had all of this safety way all this black squiggly line that I could still use to save and invest so that I could go ahead and build up a nest egg. Remember that $912,000 so that I could pull out $100 a day and just live off of that because worst case scenario, I could just live in Thailand. Does that make sense, right? So once I understood that, the next step was just opening up a brokerage account. Now, a brokerage account is very simple. It's a place where you go ahead and invest into stocks and to funds and to equities and to all of those things. I was always like, oh, I'll do it later, I'll do it later. The best time for me to do this was to do it earlier before I started making money because if you don't have a plan for your money, your money will disappear. Every single time I made a lot of money in a short amount of time and I did not have a plan or a home for that money, I lost it all. I literally lost it all. Again, learn from my mistakes, don't be an idiot, 
unless you want to go ahead and learn from your own mistakes, which is stupid because why would you do that? That's very expensive and time consuming, right? So here are some of the brokerage accounts you could open up. You could open up with Fidelity. Fidelity.com is very simple. You could just go ahead and create one with there. Another one is Schwab, Schwab.com. You could go ahead and do that. And a cool thing about Schwab is they literally have these debit cards where you could go ahead and for example, go anywhere in the around the world and pull out money from the ATM with a debit card with like very little foreign transaction fees or I think they actually reimburse you. I travel around the world, which is like a debit card from Charles Schwab, which is really good. Uh, eTrade.com as well as Vanguard.com as well as TDAmeritrade.com. Literally go ahead, pick one of those. It doesn't matter. Just have a brokerage account so that you already have a home for your excess money when you go ahead and do the saving. Does that make sense? Now the next step is creating an asset allocation. Now what is this? An asset allocation is essentially where are you going to go ahead and invest your money that you've saved. Now for most people, they take money from the risky asset, which is their business, and they invest it in a risky asset, which is crypto, which is dumb because they could potentially lose everything, right? You don't want that. You need to, to like divide it by your risk tolerance on where you think you will have the safest bets and the most long-term bets. And again, most people are dumb and stupid because how do I know that? I was dumb and stupid. I made a bunch of money. I was like, let's just put it in a bunch of crypto projects. And I'm putting in a bunch of crypto projects and just I'm bleeding left and right money and all the money that I made literally lost it all because I, I didn't have the proper asset allocation. Does that make sense? So here's like a good asset allocation. If you read all those books that I recommended, this is kind of like literally how I have it set up, right? So essentially most of the money that's coming in from my business that after I, for example, go ahead and pay the taxes, most of it is going into index funds. Why? Because my business is a risky asset that I can control. Index funds are something that can safely grow about like eight to 12% every single year. So I can get my 4% and live off of that for the rest of my life. The other one is maybe individual stocks. Maybe if you see yourself holding Tesla for the next 10, 20, 30, 40 years, great, go ahead and get Tesla. If you see yourself thinking, oh, Amazon's gonna exist for the next 10 and 20, 30, 40 years, and you can think it's gonna be bigger later on than now, great, pick that. But understand that it's a very smaller part of your portfolio or asset allocation. And then crypto, it should be like 10%, 5% or lower, right? Because that is a high risk asset, right? And as you can see, this is kind of like my asset allocation class. Again, you could choose it for your own. If you want to YOLO it and go 100% high risk, that's, that's all on, that's your decision, right? That's literally your decision, right? Meaning if you make a bunch of money, great, congrats to you. But if you lose a bunch of money, that's all your fault because you didn't understand the risk assessments of mitigating your risk. And when it comes to making money and investing money, it's not about how much money you make, it's how much you keep. Does that make sense? So this is currently my entire allocation right here. And then the seven one is automated. What do I mean by automated? Well, about every two weeks, I have my brokerage pull out automatically about a certain percentage of my income every single two weeks. Why is that? Because when you see money in your bank account, your mind does the funniest things. It's just like, oh, I have money. Let me just blow it. Let me just spend it. You will find a way to spend it. Why is that? Because money is kind of like a thermostat, right? When it's too hot and the thermostat is here, the fans are going to turn on and it's going to cool it down. But if it gets too cold, guess what? The heater is going to turn on. Oh, the thermostat's over here. So it's going to heat it back up. No matter what happens, your thermostat will always keep the temperature the same. It's the exact same thing with money. Okay. You have a thermometer in your mind on how much you think you're worth, right? For me, for the longest time, it was $2,000. Okay. $2,000. If I made more than $2,000 in my bank account, I would find a way to spend it. If I made less than $2,000, I would freak out and I would find a way to go ahead and make more money so that I can make that $2,000. That was my set point. Now, the problem with those people is they let their set point literally be the reason why they don't have money to go ahead and invest in. So what I ended up doing is I understood that this was a natural psychological thing that was happening in my mind. So what I did is I was like, screw this. I'm just going to go ahead and automate it. So I don't even have to think because I'll create human error because I've known myself in the past, right? So what I do is literally now, I, you, w most brokerages do this with your bank account. Every single two weeks, a huge amount of money literally gets just sent out so I don't even see it. I literally only look at my bank account every single day. Oh, wow, my business is doing well. My business is doing well. Let me do all these things. But I also like am realizing that a huge amount of money is getting pulled out every single two weeks so I don't even look at it because if I can't see it, I can't touch it. Does that make sense? And literally just doing that alone. I remember looking at my brokerage account the other day and I was like, what? I saved that much money? You'll be surprised just what happens when doing certain simple things over a long period of time can actually go ahead and do. And you can get it to the point where you could allocate it yourself where you could be like, okay, 80% goes into, for example, say, say like, let's start off with a thousand dollars a month, right? You could have it so that $800 automatically goes into an index fund in your brokerage account. $1,500 automatically go to, for example, uh, a separate one where you're literally only doing individual stocks like Amazon or Tesla or Google or, or Meta or any of that stuff. 
and 5% can little go to crypto and you could just do it automatically. So then all you have to control is how much percentage of the income that you're making from your online business to actually go ahead and invest in. And if you wanna know the best online business that allows people to go ahead and create the most cash flow possible, then make sure you check out this video right here.